Okay. Going Mojave Green. We're here, beautiful spring day in the Mojave Desert in the Evenpah Valley. We got this uh, classic Mojave Desert here behind us. And then just the juxtaposition, big word, but of man and his development. We got Highway 15 right behind us here, cars rushing by on their way to Vegas, just up here to the left. And then interesting story that broke this week, right behind us here you can see the tower being built here for the Bright Source uh, Energy Plant. It's a solar plant, very interesting technology. We'll get some pictures in a second, but they have mirrors that are going to shine on a central tower and heat that up and then produce hot water, I assume, or some technology to produce electricity to be shipped off to LA 200 miles that way. So, what happened was that this is actually a very rich area for desert tortoise and obviously desert tortoise endangered species something that we need to look at and they'd worked out a mitigation for them and that mitigation has come up to some problems so they've actually stopped the 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 uh, construction of this plant behind us here and it's just such a fascinating story because here we are standing on a cattle loading chute and the farmers, the cattle ranches, which was such a central social part of the Mojave Desert, have basically had to shut down their operations over the last few years because of concerns about competition with the desert tortoise and their, and their food source. And so we've got this problem we have in sustainability. It's really a challenge of trade-offs. How do we trade off with the environmental sphere to the social sphere and the economic sphere. And so the concern here would be that the economic sphere has maybe taken too much of the forefront in that most of these new solar plants are driven by the, the very big incentives coming from the Reinvestment Act. And so we're just looking for this, this better balance. And I think the principle we're looking here is looking at here is long-term planning and the, and the concept of precautionary principle. Let's not do something today in a big hurry um, where we would affect the future for our kids and the sustainability of what we're doing here on this planet. Right here in Casino Land, Buffalo Bills, Prim, Nevada, right next to the solar plant. So these projects, one of the things to look at is, is you know, what, are these, what is the job potential? This project has thousands of people here uh, when it gets back up on full production um, in the construction phase. And then we need to look at the future and see how many jobs are there, out there in the future. Big part of it, obviously, a social side of it, economic side of it, um, is to keep the employment, keep the local people in jobs. Another big conversation has been do we have the transmission capacity to send this uh, from these projects out to back into LA. So you're looking at the lines here coming from the Colorado River hydro plants and obviously those will have to be augmented here to pick up this from the new bright source project right here behind it. Mirrors going in right there. Another look down on the new Bright Source energy plant and just thinking about how you fit all this in. Um, how you allow for these kinds of developments and just cause the minimum amount of footprint. So, uh, see a couple examples on the way up of roads bigger than normal, Mojave yuccas that weren't removed. Uh, and actually salvaged that we just thrown on the side of the road. But uh, got a Mojave Yucca right in front of us here and a water tank and just thinking about water and, and cattle ranching and how the cattle ranch has actually provided a great service by providing an extra water source for the, for the animals of the desert and as they've moved out we've lost that water source. So it's something to think about that uh, you know that uh, some of these uses can be can be beneficial. Now, we've noticed that as they're putting in the the panels, they're also not disturbing the underground very much. So um, definitely trying to do the right things, and just have to see 
how we can best balance. Here we have a cat claw acacia with a mistletoe living symbiotically with it and just makes you think about how we can use our technology and our science to and our understanding of this desert environment to allow the solar plant to live symbiotically in this valley as well and I, I think it's possible. Some Mojave yucca that should have been, been uh, salvaged and there's a uh, a straw wattle in place for in this little wash here to uh, prevent erosion of some sort and uh, folks are obviously struggling a little bit here in the control of some. We've got some more Mojave yuccas just thrown in the wash down here. So uh, somebody not watching the shop too well here. There's some choyas that have been transplanted and then looking over to man's technology and how the machine like that, um, not properly managed by somebody who doesn't understand what they're doing, can change a lot of habitat in a hurry. But as long as the planning's there and we know what the long-term plan is, I think we're good.